Greetings, YouTube. This is Brendan from BMC Self Invent. Today I will be doing a reaction video to the uh, collapse of Medicago. I am very disappointed about this. Yes, they are a vaccine manufacturer. Yes, I am a conservative. Um, yes, I am actually working, doing my wiring and reacting at the same time. Multitasking, it's a good thing guys, if you can do it. Um, I'm actually very saddened to hear about this. Why would that be? Why would I be sad about that? Because this is a vaccine that didn't involve anything biological other than plant-based technology. A plant-based uh, uh, injection, a plant-based uh, form of healthcare that doesn't involve anything that would appall anybody else, especially those of us on the right when it comes to vaccine development. It, it's actually the thing that could have made a lot of people of a lot of political stripes happy. Um, it's just disheartening and me as a taxpayer I forked a, a mother load of money into a Quebec based company and that's probably part of the reason why there was so much money injected though the federal government ignored any potential bad outcomes but the main reason why this company collapsed yes I'm wiring the main reason why this company collapsed is because they were not able to get their product to market. Why is that? Why could they not get the vaccine to market after it had been approved by Health Canada? I went through all the studies, went through all the rigorous uh, regulations, not only for emergency use, but for regular use. Why is it? Like I said, um, you know, I may be a conservative, but I am pro-vaccine, but I have to really know what the science says about it. Um, why is it? I don't get it. Well, I do get it. It's called virtue signaling. You see, Medicago managed to develop a vaccine particle that works the same as a deactivated vaccine, but without the genetic material involved. And the whole entire point of having a fake vaccine particle in there is to trick your immune system into thinking your body is infected, so it builds immune response. Um, but yeah, I don't know what side of the vaccine debate you're on. Um, I'm pro, but I'm also for liberty, and people should be free to put in their bodies as they see fit now, as of this point. Um, yeah, you, you are entitled to your worldview and your opinion. I respect that. And well, let's see what they have to say about this. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the fact that something so revolutionary as this and had the potential got shut down by mere left-wing World Health Organization virtue signaling. Anyways, let's take a look. Just before the pandemic, Medicago was a company that was really on the cutting edge of biopharmaceuticals. Its secret weapon, plants, and using them like little factories to churn out the key components of vaccines. Our process really is so different, and that's the one thing everyone remarks about, is they've never seen a company like this, they've never seen anyone who does what we do, and there's just this buzz within the industry about Medicago. Then COVID hit, and the company saw an opportunity. A biotech company in Quebec has begun Canada's first human trials for a potential vaccine for COVID-19. Currently building a large facility in Quebec City uh, mm -hmm. that will, when, when completed, will be able to deliver a billion doses on an annual basis. It was so promising, the Canadian government wanted in. It invested $173 million to give the company a jump start to help you know, build that facility that would eventually churn out COVID vaccines and to develop homegrown, made in Canada vaccine capacity. So, yeah, that's one thing Canada really did need. Um, 
It just seems that over the past few years, we threw away our ability to be self-sufficient on the medical front um, on so many things, including medication and vaccine development. Um, you know, that, that's the only thing I don't like about the medical industry is that they, they're more concerned about profits and greed than they are about the human being. Um, you know, like I said, it's weird coming from a conservative to say such things who by nature are probably natural born capitalists. But to me, I feel that people need to be healthy to produce. So uh, for a free market, you need to really be free in three components and one of them is healthcare. You wouldn't be, you know, so reliant on other countries. But two years later, a major snag that some say the government should have seen coming a mile mm -hmm. away. Today, why the Canadian government invested so heavily in a company that just shut down. As a company, Medicago is almost a quarter century old. It started as a simple research partnership between Laval University in Quebec City and Agriculture Canada. Ce que j'aime beaucoup de Québec, c'est que c'est une petite ville, mais très dynamique. Il y a des théâtres, tout, tout est accessible. It incorporated as Medicago in 1999. And it was just a few years later, it began to work with a very particular type of plant, Nicotiana benthamiana, which will become important later. Um, it's a very close. Yes, notice the type of plant that is. And uh, where it got sourced from and everything like that. Um, yeah, take a look. Let's keep going of the tobacco plant. Useful because of how easy it is to infect with viruses. What do you see when you look at a plant? We see the potential to help protect human health through the power of vaccines. Now, Medicago would go on to start production of an H1N1 swine flu vaccine in 2009. They, eventually, they delivered millions of doses. It opened uh, a manufacturing plant down south in North Carolina in 2011, even contributed directly to the fight against Ebola, producing on a large scale anti-Ebola monoclonal antibodies. Now, all of this is important because it shows Medicago had a track record, one that the government would look to when the pandemic was officially declared in March of 2020, and then in October that same year when it made a major announcement. To begin with, our government is providing up to $173 million to Medicare to advance their vaccine candidate and create a production facility in Quebec City. And from the company's CEO, we are proud to contribute a Made in Canada vaccine to our country's vaccine supply, and we want to thank the government of Canada for its confidence in Medicago. So, what does $173 million get you? Well, a big boost to research and development and to the construction of its Quebec City manufacturing facility. It was also part of a broader deal to secure 76 million doses of its vaccine pending Health Canada approval. That would come more than a full year later. Covifens, as the vaccine is called, was finally going to see the light of day. Today we're here to talk to you about Health Canada's authorization of Medicago's Covifens COVID-19 vaccine for adults 18 to 64 years of age. This is the first authorized COVID-19 vaccine developed by a Canadian company. And make no mistake, beyond the Canadian achievement, this was heralded as a breakthrough broadly for vaccine science. At Medicago, we use a careful step-by-step -step process to develop vaccines, using our plants as mini bioreactors. The basic idea, introduce genetically modified bacteria with COVID's genetic instructions directly into the cells of a plant. When those plants grow, they produce virus-like particles that mimic the coronavirus, and they do a good enough job of it that once introduced into humans in vaccine form, they trick the immune system into recognizing it as COVID, allowing the body to develop the right antibodies to protect itself, but without any risk of actual infection. But this doesn't work. That was the beautiful part of the vaccine I was telling you about. It's a plant-based and has no um, 
has no genetic material whatsoever in it, has no ability to self-replicate. It's just an imitation virus particle made out of plant material. And it was grown within a relative of the tobacco plant. Brilliant. Just any old plant. You remember Nicotiana benthamiana, the close cousin of the common tobacco plant? Medicago has a long history of working with it. It goes back to like 2005. But then in 2008, an actual tobacco company became interested. Now, Philip Morris is an American multinational tobacco giant, selling products in more than 180 countries worldwide, generating billions of dollars in revenue every year. When we talk about big tobacco, Philip Morris is absolutely a part of that. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. So, Philip Morris bought a large stake in Medicago for nearly $16 million. And as Medicago's fortunes rose... Okay, that was a big mistake on part of the uh, pharmaceutical company itself. And why is that? Well, because Philip Morris is a company that sells tobacco products which kill people. You know, it, it seems like a bit of an, an ethical conundrum there that a company that wants to kill people wants to save people. I guess they want to keep them alive so they can keep smoking their cigarettes. Who knows? Um, I don't approve of that, but I get it. Um, when you are starting out, you know, you need funding. And to me, the even if it is a tobacco company, there is an opportunity for them to change their business model from an addictive product to a product that can save lives. Um, let's see some more. So did the value of Philip Morris's stock. That would become a problem. Meanwhile, a major snag in Canada's plan to export a COVID vaccine developed in Quebec. It's the first plant-based based vaccine, but as Christine Birak shows us, because there's tobacco money behind it, getting approval is tricky. Medicago was dealt a major blow as it tried to get its product to wider markets. By this point, Canada had already been relying on Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine for more than a year. Medicago's most lucrative opportunity was likelier to be overseas, shipping vaccines abroad. But the World Health Organization decided not to accept the vaccine for emergency use because of the company's ties with, you guessed it, Philip Morris. Experts say that... See, there's that virtue signaling again. Um, just because the company does bad things with other things, they take away the ability to finance something that can be good because of something silly like that. Like, come on, guys, there was a worldwide pandemic going on and uh, lots of people were dying and getting sick or maimed, if not dead. Yes, I know that it's not as bad as we thought it was in the end, but still a lot worse than you think it really was. Um, what the hell's the problem with the World Health Organization? You need to pull their head out of their ass sometimes. Just pay attention to the bigger picture was this is a company that saves lives and they could have divested more towards helping people than killing people. Vaccine safety and efficacy isn't the problem. It's allowing a cigarette company to profit. Now, this should not have come as a surprise. Experts we spoke to say this is a long-standing policy of the WHO to have nothing to do with an industry that kills millions of people every year. And that from Medicago's point of view, this wasn't an oversight. It was a calculated there goes, risk. There goes but unwillingness no approval. Being that Medicago's vaccine pipeline to the world was being choked off. It's promising. And you have to go, you know, to go back two years ago. Uh, what we wanted to make sure to protect the health and safety of Canadians. It should have known because Canada is actually a signatory to a legally binding agreement. 
just all this crazy virtue signaling, I tell you. It's just stupid. Okay, back for another walk. Let's go take a look at some more video, shall we? All, all families of vaccine. And, you know, Novavax with particle subunit, with Moderna and Pfizer with mRNA. And certainly Medicago was seen, if you go back two years ago, if you look at the record, um, people were seeing that as a very promising technology, still today. That's why it was approved by It Health is very Canada. promising. But even and you guys screwed Canada it up. Canada is the only government in the world to you should have required Philip Morris to be dropped from the roster so right from the get-go before investing. Medicago and the federal government Matter of fact, were both Canada stuck should have bought all those shares and had, had to, some to control. To every challenge, there's a solution. Period. Just period. You've seen me before. Um, there'll, there'll be a solution. Sometimes the solution, some crown corporations are for Medicago in this case, and Philip Morris. I think vaccine development would have Just over a month ago, Philip Morris announced it was selling its stake. At the time, it held about 21% of Medicago stock. Yeah, see, that's stock. a big chunk of a company. The sale was roundly seen as good news for the company. You know, free of its links to big tobacco, it would be free to reapply for World Health Organization approval. So this is why I get pissed off at the WHO. A federally contributed company, you know, taxpayer funded, contributions did the right thing cut tobacco out of the uh, whole entire system as per requirement per international treaty per blah 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 litigious garbage nonsense um they should have even at least thrown medicago a freaking bone you know you know there's multiple faults on many different areas but like i said when you're in car when we are in crisis compromises have to be made and I can see why so many conservatives do not like the World Health Organization. It is completely absurd. Let's keep watching. But then, late last week, a bombshell. Medicago, a COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer with its headquarters in Quebec, its parent company has just announced it is shutting that lab oh, down. That breaks my heart. Because that company has Thursday, promise. Mitsubishi Chemical Group Big said promise. there have been significant changes to the vaccine market and that the vaccine, Covifens, was being discontinued. Furthermore, the statement says, the group judged that it was not viable to continue to make further investment in the commercialization of Medicago's development products and decided to... So uh, here we go again. That's uh, left-wing virtue signaling. When you have over-regulation, you screw up business. You screw up a good business that's actually going to help. Too much regulation. Too much red tape. No freaking compromises. What the hell, man? And I'm not talking about the mayonnaise either, though it's good mayonnaise. What the hell, man? Get it? Ah, uh, dad joke of the day. Um, but yeah, that pisses me off to see. And obviously, a parent company is gonna have to make a business decision to shut something down if it's not gonna be profitable. Not because the, it was a bad product. It's just a whole mixture of bad red tape issues. And it should have, it, for me, I think, yeah, if that was a problem, yeah, the government should have said, before we fund your vaccine product, you have to drop Philip Morris. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But if that wasn't going to happen, the WHO should have said, okay, we understand there's a, a tobacco giant involved but at least for a change they can actually help people instead of killing people with their addictive products there are two things in this world that make a lot of money and it's and it's contributed by the mother invention things that save lives and things that ruin lives because there's two things that motivate innovation in every area of life the first thing is economics is there a financial reason to make it happen is there a financial motive is there a financial gain that will benefit 
us and many other people who would also be affiliated with our product. But the other thing is necessity. We were in a bit of a crunch. We are trying to help a lot of people and we are trying to protect a lot of people. A plant-based vaccine for both the vegans, both the left and the right wing of the vaccine debate. This is one that could have been palatable and because it was so cheap to produce because you're just using a derivative or a relative of the tobacco plant to grow the vaccine instead of a bioreactor or fetal cells or long-lived ones like other vaccines make. This is revolutionary. It is completely ethical. You can't get more ethical than using plants to test the new product on. It's more ethical than the makeup industry. It's more ethical than the drug industry where they test on lab rats if drugs work. Even though I'm pretty sure they tested on lab rats to see if the vaccine would make them sick. And I understand those places have their place. But come on, guys. There's my friend, man. Like I said, man, uh, too much red tape all around. Sometimes you gotta just use your brain and pull your head out of your ass and uh, deregulate or make a compromise or turn a blind eye when it's necessary. The power of discretion is yours. Um, yeah, no, I'm. Sh it's sad. Medicago really did have what it takes to go big, and it wasn't shut down because it wasn't profitable. It was or even successful in the product, it was shut down because of stupid red tape. Um, there's more to this video, but uh, it's, the video is going on for long enough for you guys. Take care. I'll post a link to this news article. Yes, it's CBC. You can't rely on everything the CBC says, but you just listen to this one. It's not really politically motivated. It's actually motivated by the economic and political reasons for why they got shut down. Anyways, take care guys. Cheers.